Hello and welcome to our Thursday edition of the True Crime and Wine Couple where we will be discussing Scott Peterson's case being taken up by the LA Innocence Project. Today we will be having a repeat of our Stone Farm Cellar Pinot Grigio because we did not drink the whole bottle because we were talking to you about crime. <laughs> So today we'll be we'll be having some more of that. Instead of having 15 open bottles of wine, we thought we'd dig into this one, and since it was so good the first time, so and we'll we'll review it at the end though. If you, yes, we'll review it again in case you didn't catch the last review. So if you need to pause the video, go grab yourself some wine, and come on back, and you can have some wine with us while we talk about Scott Peterson. Okay, so I'm going to give the background first. Scott Peterson currently sits in prison for the rest of his life for the murder of his pregnant wife, Lacey. Scott was 30 at the time of the murder, which occurred in 2002. Lacey was 27 and she was 7.5 months pregnant at the time of her murder. Scott was having an affair with a woman named Amber Fry and told her at the time that he was single. Lacey was last seen alive on December 23rd 2002. Scott Peterson claims that he left to go fishing on December 24th, 2002 at 9.30 a.m. and Lacey was there when he left. Scott reported her missing at 5, around 5 p.m. on December 24th. The police suspected Scott right away because he was calm and didn't ask the usual questions husbands do when their wives are missing. What sort of questions would you ask I if your wife went that, missing? What are the usual <laughs> questions? I, I mean, if you went missing, I'd be freaking out. I, I don't know what... Is, is there standard questions that we should well, be asking? Well, um, they said he didn't ask things like, what are you doing? You know, what leads are you following? What tips do you have? So he didn't ask for any details of the investigation. I think I'd be all right then. Because you know me. You would be... <laughs> <laughs> all about the questions. I follow this stuff so much that if it was you, I would be throwing my phone into the nearest body of water <laughs> and not speaking to anyone. <laughs> okay, so anyway, Connor's body does dis was discovered on April 13th of 2003, and Lacey's was discovered the next day, which was April 14th of that year. Scott was then arrested on April 18th right thereafter, so four days later, with $15,000 in cash, four cell phones, survival and camping equipment, both his own license and his brother's license, and 12 Viagra tablets. And he had dyed his hair blonde. He was sentenced to death in 2005. After 19 years in prison, that sentence was commuted to a life sentence without parole. The prosecution said Scott smothered or strangled Lacey on December 23rd or 24th. As you can see, they did not narrow down the timeline very well. They did not prove when it happened, but they said that was irrelevant. They did not need to prove when it happened. They just needed to prove that she was dead and they did that by having the bodies. Then they said Scott disposed of the body in the San Francisco Bay when he went fishing and the motive was insurance money and the affair with Amber Fry. The physical evidence, of which there was very little, was a strand of dark hair found in pliers on the boat that could have been Lacey's, according to the prosecution, along with a pair of pliers also found on the boat that contained Lacey's DNA. The prosecution also tried to prove Connor's time of death by a method that was disproven to be incorrect. They also claimed that dogs that were unqualified picked up a scent at the marina. The dogs had gained the scent from cross-contaminated items in addition to being not qualified. So basically the dogs were used, they were not certified as sniffing dogs or, you know. Then an expert in bodies in water was called who later admitted he had done no training or studies and had no expertise. Shockingly, this testimony was key in convicting Scott. And I am not skewing this in any way towards Scott Peterson. I'm just giving the facts 
as I have researched them. The only other physical evidence was blood found on the couple's bedspread and Scott's truck door. But Scott claimed that was easily explained away by his profession, which was fertilizer salesman. So maybe I guess if he had to carry the heavy bags, of, that didn't make a lot of sense to me and I couldn't find anything else about that. But Whose blood was it? They didn't say, just blood was found. Now you have to remember this was in 2002. So, yeah, but it was 2002. They, it wasn't 1955. They did not test the blood. Unless it was his blood. If, if you know, I did not find that. In, and I, believe me, I was down the rabbit hole for many hours using a desktop, a Chromebook, and like a TV to research all this. So if you have the answer, let us know. No physical evidence was found anywhere else. So the circumstantial evidence included Scott's demeanor, his possessions, at the time of his arrest and appearance at the time of his arrest and the affair with Amber Fry. And from what I'd heard, it was going, the, 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 like the trial was going in Scott's favor until Amber Fry took the stand. Do, you know, take that as you will. The defense of the timeline could be accounted for and Scott never changed his story which I found interesting. The prosecution also had another expert testify that Connor was alive after they thought he had been murdered due to the length of fetal bones. This witness, the witness that countered for him was also discredited on the stand and asked for some slack. So that witness was, they, they had a counter witness, he, they discredited that witness and he said, cut me some slack. Yeah, cause that's why we called you to court to cut you some slack. That was devastating to Scott Peterson's defense. The defense's theory centered around a robbery committed at a house across the street from the Petersons on December 24th, 2022. There were also witnesses who said they saw Lacey walking her dog after Scott left to go fishing, but that defense, according to the Scott Peterson appeal website, only three of the 12 were followed up with via phone calls, and that was the end of the testimony. They were never called to testify in court. So right now we know that the LA Innocence Project has taken up Scott Peterson's case. This is not the New York Innocence Project. Um, the New York Innocence Project, I think, had over 300, I'm pretty sure, yeah. uh, overturned convictions. The LA Innocence Project has 130. So I'm assuming it's like a smaller, it's, it's you know, not as popular. Um, there there's are, just more guilty people in California. Maybe, maybe <laughs> that's true. Their involvement will focus on DNA testing a blood-stained mattress found in a burned orange van one mile from Lacey and Scott's home. They believe this is connected to Lacey's disappearance as per the robbery committed across from the Peterson's house defense. And there is a fire marshal who was involved at the time. And he, he's the one who claimed that, you know, this was, this was related. So that's the background. That's what we got. Scott Peterson is now 51 years old and was convicted when he was what, 30? So yeah, so he's, so he's been in prison for 20 years. Yeah. So we'll start with Peter. What do you think about the uh, LA Innocence Project taking up Scott Peterson's case? Let, let me just first say, we know this is very controversial. I've seen the comments. I've seen the hate for Scott Peterson. This is our opinions and our opinions only based on our research that we have done. So we, we are open to everyone's opinions and we ask that you be open to ours as well. Okay, so let's start with, I think he's a scumbag. Let, let's just throw that out there. Anybody who's having an affair while his wife is pregnant and then goes out fishing on Christmas Eve um, is not, does not, that does not bode well for him. Secondly, all that crap they found on him when, they, when he was arrested, what was he doing? Why, why all the cash? Why all the cell phones? Why double IDs? why wilderness stuff to go you know mm -hmm. god knows where um that to me is not kosher well and you also have to consider circumstantial evidence 20 years ago versus now 
Right. 22 years no, old. No, I understand. Well, right, exactly. If I was, yes, and, right. I, and just so you know, when, when, I, when I look at these cases, when, when we talk about these cases, and I drive her nuts, just so you know, I, not only here, in real life, I drive her bananas. Um, I try to look at it from if I was sitting as a juror. What is going to make them convince me to convict this person? So that's what I look at. That's interesting. I never, okay, that's a good perspective. So those, I, what I just mentioned would be, okay, this guy's a scumbag, I'm going to convict him. That, that's, that's in that pile. Mm -hmm. Now let's go look over at the other pile. Which, unfortunately, seems like wasn't really presented to the jury to have this opinion. But if there was robberies in the area, if there was witnesses that place her alive, walking the dog while he was supposedly fishing, which he probably wasn't fishing, he was probably with his girlfriend, is what I would think. Um, but either way, it doesn't matter, she was still alive. Then there's that burned out van. There's the mattress in the van. There's the blood on the mattress. My problem with all this is more with law enforcement mm -hmm. and the defense. First of all, why didn't law enforcement follow? And eat, let, let's put aside the fact that there's a woman missing. Let's put aside the fact that there's a woman murdered. There's robberies. There's a burned out van with a bloody mattress. Mm -hmm. Where's the investigation? It's 2002, it's not 1952. They can do blood evidence. They can take this stuff. They, and there was, there's was there been people, I mean, the, the Golden State Killer. Mm -hmm. He was caught how many years later because of DNA evidence that these detectives thought enough of, let's just put it in a baggie, we'll seal it away, maybe someday later down the road, we'll have enough technology to make use of this. Why not with us? It, that just doesn't make any sense to me. And, and the more I look into a lot of these cases, mm -hmm. the more I'm finding law enforcement really either cuts corners, drops the ball, is corrupt, is incompetent. I, th there's this, and, and you're, this, this is coming from a law enforcement guy. So I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm disparaging all law enforcement officers because I'm not. But a lot of these controversial cases, a lot of these bigger cases, are big and are controversial because law enforcement did not do their due diligence. They didn't follow up on the, on the leads, that kind of thing. Now, my question to you is... Sorry, I had to pick up my best friend. <laughs> why did the defense not make more of that other theory? My best answer to that would be that I don't know, but you know, we see what's going on in Delphi. We see how these things play out. I, I, I just, I just keep seeing that you know the pro, the law, the law enforcement and the prosecution they want to cut and dry. I think this case, and I think we let emotions get in these cases. I mean, this was a very. You saw the picture of that beautiful pregnant woman. She was beautiful. She was glowing with pregnancy, and it just tears at your heartstrings. And then I think we make poor decisions. You know. Yeah, but. It seems to be happening, and is it happening more and more now than it did before? Is it because, and you're going to find if you listen to me enough, <laughs> I'm not big on technology. I'm not big on all of the the stuff that we have anymore. Um, going back to my boomer, even though you say I'm not a boomer, I am <laughs> a boomer. Um, is it making them lazy? Is it making them... We have this so we can just, we, we can cut the corners. We, we have all this technology, we have the computers, we have the, the scientists, and just give it to them. I think Whereas before, back in the 70s, back in the 60s, they had to get out on the streets. They had to, they had to interview, they had to collect evidence. They, I mean, they had to get all their ducks in a row and collect everything and make a case. Well, you see that with Lisk, with the Lisk case. I was going to bring that up, yeah. All those years, all those corrupt people screwed up that case, and then they put that task force together, and it was, what, months by the time they yeah, had Rex Yorman? Because that's where I was leaving to. <laughs> 
That's exactly where I was going with it. We've been together it. almost nine years, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> right? But it's a perfect example, exactly. isn't it? Yeah. I think another thing we have to take into account, too, and I think people don't think about this from the psychological standpoint, law enforcement is working with these families. And that family, they were just, uh, I mean, I remember, it was, I mean, I well, I was what, I was around Scott Peterson's age. I was in my early 30s at the time. And um, they were just, um, as you could imagine, you know what I mean? Well, yeah. And I think that's another thing. I think working with the family just, you know, maybe that tugs at your heartstrings so bad that you feel like you just, now let me finish, you feel like you just have to have that conviction, you know? And I think maybe we discount that as the No, public, I'm sure know? that has a lot to do with it. Right. I, I, that can't be easy. And you, you need to look these families in the eyes mm -hmm. and you have to... Give them something. And back then, they didn't seem to gag the families. You know what I mean? Like, now they, they gag the heck out of it. There was no gag order, so that family was free to... Nowadays, I think, well, again, they'd and, be gagged. Well, yeah, you know? and again, it's because of the technology. The, the, right, Back exactly. then, there wasn't the social media. Yeah, what did we have back then? MySpace, maybe? MySpace, I MySpace, think, yeah. I think, was in its infancy. Yeah, that was right. it. And MySpace, <laughs> And MySpace back then was to promote bands. Like it started, that's what it was. I mean, I know people got into it socially and it was kind of like the, you know, the Facebook intro. I had no idea. I, I, I exactly. had a MySpace, but I didn't know what it was for. But that's what it really <laughs> was for. Exactly. And then everybody jumped on the MySpace, but it was really for band promotion. And at the time, yeah, yeah at the time, it. I think it was, you know. Just I think I had another to have one to be cool, <laughs> which I wasn't. I think another thing, too, is if you look at it for, I, I think this is a murder, this is a trial that had it happened now would have been had a very different outcome. Because I think you have a much more, they call it the CSI effect. So because of the show CSI, they said juries actually have gotten more sophisticated, but less at the same time. It's because they think they know more forensically. And you think you understand, like, you really think you understand forensics. This is my first year teaching forensic science. And you think you get it. You think you watch this shit. You think you understand. And if you don't have a scientific mind and you go to teach that stuff, I have like a, maybe a, I have kind of a, maybe biology mind. I'm not a chemistry, physics mind. So when you really start to like teach it and, and, and see what's involved, it's a lot of math, it's a lot of physics, it's a lot of chemistry. So I think we think we know more than we really do about forensic science, the general public, you know what I mean? But I think that the juries now are a lot more sophisticated and I think they want to see the concrete evidence because we've spent all this time watching all this stuff on, you know, on social media, watching CSI, disc, um, ID, the ID channel was the number one channel for women of a certain de demographic for years and years and years. So I think that had this played out now, they would have definitely needed to have more concrete evidence to show to that jury. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I don't know that I could, conv I, I, I don't know if I could convince somebody on circumstantial evidence. Well, there was Give the DNA. something. Right. Well, DNA on a boat, I'm sure, that, I'm sure she's been on the boat. Well, actually, that had come into play because there was there was a, like there was a controversy on whether or not she knew about the boat. So they, some, I guess, one side said she didn't know about the boat, and the other side said she'd been on the boat. So they never even really proved that. It didn't seem like he never had a picture of her on the boat. I don't believe. I mean, so. if we were on a boat, I'd take a picture I of us. I think they had like they had a. Well, you're, you're squeezing me here. I, you know, I, I, I got my details that I needed. There was something about the boat. If you guys know, tell us. But, yeah, it was never really... I do really... this a lot to her. I take her in tangents that she's not prepared for. <laughs> I, I kind of knew that was coming, but I wasn't... Yeah, there was something about... There was a controversy on whether or not she even knew about the boat. Well, that would be concrete evidence. <laughs> Hello? Exactly. That, that would be all I would need. But remember, Honestly, it's if you tie in, if, but if you tie in the circumstantial, right. and then you give me something I can latch onto, that DNA evidence. If you can prove that that woman was never on that boat, right? Then there's DNA evidence on there. Well, guess what, dude? You're screwed. Well, the pliers could have come from the house too, though. Like, how do you prove that the DNA on the pliers came from the boat? You really don't know. It could have come true. from the house and he could have brought it. So, like, I don't know if that really, that one has stood up anyway. That could have come from anything. You know what I mean? And they said that she was smothered or strangled, right? Right, yes. 
so blood evidence, what does that do then? Exactly. Not like she was stabbed or anything. Exactly. So he well, could have cut his finger. She could have cut her finger. She, maybe she was pregnant. She could have bled a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but maybe she scratched him in, in the commission of the strangling and, you know, the blood transferred. I don't know. I don't know how long evidence lasts on a body that's been in the water. But if he was scratched, it sh there should still be something. I would think. I thought no, there was no, no. No, you're talking about the blood. The blood evidence. No, was on the no. Car. Yeah, I sort oh, of went off on the car. Okay, way. gotcha. But you, you said DNA okay. and. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. All right. If she scratched them. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we don't know what the DNA was, right? right. Yeah. So. I don't know. I don't think there was enough. If I was on the jury, now obviously I didn't sit through the whole trial. Um, you're going to take in a lot of stuff. You're going to be looking at him. You're going to be listening to everything. But Speaking of the jury, I'm going to cut. I'm sorry to cut you no, off there. Okay. There was also an issue with issue with one of the jurors, but believe it or not, the defense wanted this juror. So she had red hair, and the defense thought she didn't look mainstream. So she would be understanding towards Scott. So they wanted this woman on the jury, they named her Strawberry Shortcake, and she actually became one of the reasons that he got, like she, she was doing stuff like referring to the baby as, as baby boy or something, and how could he kill baby boy and like send, so like she went off the rails. But the defense wanted her because of her looks. Now that I, and believe me, I, I have been, have you been ever been to jury selection? I was once and I wasn't selected. But you went to the selection. Yeah, I just sat in a big room and they called out names and they never called my name. But you know that they're looking at you. They. I did not know that. No. They, okay. Well, were just, you criminal or civil? I have no idea. What okay, because I I got no. called for a criminal case about two years ago and they stare at you like they are. No, I never for... even went into the into the oh, courtroom. Okay. I was just in like the waiting area. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I went. I went. To oh the yeah, area. no. I even went. I didn't even get that far. They stare and stare and stare. They want a certain age. They want certain race. They want you to look a certain way. They look at what you wear. So it's just funny to me that, you know, the, the defense wanted this woman and then she wound up making things more difficult for them. You know what I mean? Yeah. I. They, well, they, they made a whole TV show about that. What was it? Bull or something like that with uh, the guy from... Bull Durham? No, not oh, Bull Durham. That's, <laughs> was the, that's no, baseball. My bad. It was the guy from... Uh, from NCIS, he oh, left that okay. show and went to. He was like he'd sit and he'd stare at the jurors and he'd tell the whoever he was working for, the prosecution, and the defense. He'd tell them who to pick. I don't know. I don't believe in all that crap. You know that. <laughs> well, that's pretty funny because look what I did. For we uh, we watched we watched The Bachelor. And I looked at all the women contestants on The Bachelor. I know this has nothing to do with Scott Peterson, but it does have to do with picking juries. <laughs> And based on the spoilers, I picked the top two. Yeah. And I just looked at them and tried to get inside The Bachelor's head and be like, who would he pick? And I just watched the video. Like, if any of you watch The Bachelor, you know, they're like playing guitar with the tennis racket and all that. And I just watched that video. It was, what, 20 seconds? 30 yeah. seconds? And I picked the top two, trying to get in his head. I don't know how. That was my little, that was my foray into profiling. She does that all the time. <laughs> she always calls out stuff, and she's always right. I don't it's, know. I don't know. It's psychology. All or right, psychic, so. psychic, one of the other. <laughs> I'm going to go with psychic, not psychology. <laughs> I think psychology. I wish I could be psychic about the lottery numbers and stuff like that. that. Would or be we nice, wouldn't be yeah. here drinking wine with you. Exactly. Okay, so what do you think? Well, maybe we would. <laughs> do you think the LA do you think it is a good thing that the LA Innocence Project took this up? What do you think? Or yeah, do you think absolutely. They should, sleepy no. dog should lie. No, absolutely not. I, I think if there was a mistake made, mm -hmm. if there's an innocent man sitting in jail, then yeah, do what you need to do to get him out, but I don't think this is going to go anywhere because and the reason I'm saying that I don't think it's going to go anywhere is because any evidence so I, I would need it either way I need some I need some sort of evidence and any evidence that they're going to be able to bring up has been long gone they're not getting that mattress they don't have the mattress. They said they have it to test. They said they have they it to They have test. the mattress to they test. They said they have it to test, yeah. I don't know if they preserved it or what, but they said they have it. Well, that I don't know if maybe they cut the blood stain. They might have the blood stain cut off in a bag ready to test. They could have well, cut Why the heck did they do that 20 years ago? We do not know why. That's the problem. Right, well, if they, if they can get some sort of physical evidence that proves that he's innocent... I'm going to give you the answer to that because they didn't need to to convict him. There's your answer. 
they could have But I'm going to go back it. to my question again, though. Uh huh. Let's put aside the murder. Let's put aside the, the missing woman. Mm -hmm. You found a bloody mattress in a burned out van. Why aren't you going to try to. Even if it, it, it's connected to some sort of crime. My answer is correct, though. They didn't need it to convict him. Not right? him, but they needed to convict somebody else. Somebody did something. I mean, there's just that bloody mattresses and burning vans just sitting all over, well, maybe now in San Francisco, but not back then. There's a burning bush in the Bible. Yeah, but there wasn't a bloody mattress in the burning bush, was there? No, I do not believe so. <laughs> no, I don't think so. My feeling is this. For all the people out there who are arguing with me in the comments on YouTube, <laughs> <laughs> if you think he's guilty, test the evidence. If you're sure in your head that he is guilty AF, Good. This is more evidence to exactly. prove he's guilty AF, right? That's what I think. If you're that sure, and everybody's like, oh, this is a horrible thing, blah, blah, blah. They shouldn't take this on. Why not? It's more evidence that he's guilty. And you know what I mean? And yes, he's guilty of being the scum of the earth, this dude. He yeah. came across as it. He looked like it the whole time. He was probably at the time the Casey Anthony, the male Casey, Casey Anthony of America. So it's more evidence against him. Why wouldn't you test it? Yeah, exactly. And if let's say let, let's just throw this way out there, they're able to prove he's innocent. Well, don't you think the family doesn't want just someone behind bars? They want the person behind bars. If I if it was if it was my daughter. I wouldn't want just some token dude in, in jail just to, to appease me. I, I want the right person there. See, and I can't, I, I don't know if you could say that because you don't know because it didn't happen to you. And no, if they're that convinced, just let me finish. If they're that convinced, and I need to start letting you finish too, by the way. We got called out for that. Yes, I am terribly bossy. I agree. I am the matriarch of this relationship and I need to work on that. But anyway. <laughs> Um, but the funny thing is I'm the one who interrupts her all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but I got called out. Yeah, you got thanks, called out. Thanks, thanks person who called me out. Yeah. Hey, just keep watching. Call me out all you want, just keep exactly. watching. Exactly. Um, what was I, yeah, I, I, I don't, like, I don't know how that's got to affect it, because, because they're convinced, let's, let's face it, everything in their eyes has them convinced that he's the dude. I'm sure it is, because he's yeah. a scumbag. I don't know what I want. I don't know if I want that. Like, I can't speak for the family. I don't know. If if you had a violent murder in your family, b bless your heart, and, and my heart goes out to you, and let me know who you are, and I will pray for you, but I, I just can't say how they'd feel. I don't know if I'd want it if I was them. But in my opinion, the more evidence you have, the better. I want the right person. You want the right, but you don't know because you're not in the family's shoes, and you don't. You no, didn't I'm, lose your 27 year, like your your 27 year old. Pre I mean, you have your lovely grandchildren that, you know, their mothers were able to go on and have them. So I don't know if we if we really know how. I don't know if we can say how the family feels. We don't know how we would be in that situation. You know. No, maybe not. But logically, I would want the right person, not just a person. But see, that's the problem. You get into emotions and logic, and in these kind of cases, they're yeah, so they emotional, you know? So, no, I think this should move forward. I think they should do whatever they're doing. And let's face it, they're going to need to have beyond overwhelming evidence yeah. to get this overturned. Things don't just get overturned. So, the. the this this innocent pro innocence project, they've been they've been around since the nineties, right? I know New York has the LA innocence project. The LA, but I, I know New York has. So New York has Time been to go sleuthing. New York has been, I believe, since the nineties. They have three hundred overturned cases. LA is probably in the city. You know, they one thirty. They've had thir one thirty. One thirty. Um, so think about it, that's not a lot. That really isn't a lie. And to get something overturned, you need to have concrete proof that this person is innocent. So that's the only way Scott Peterson is ever going to get out of jail, is if the Innocence Project can prove 
Now, now they're proving that he's innocent, not guilty. So it's going the same way. So they have to prove without a doubt that this man is guilty or, or innocent. I mean. And they do claim on their website that they are all about the forensic science, which that would be what would exonerate. I can't find when they started. But look, they even have a link to the California Forensic Science Institute. Right. I guess I guess they work with colleges that, that, that do the work on these things. Well, if you think about it, that makes sense because right. that's where you're going to get that concrete evidence from, right. from forensics. Right. You're not going to get it from witnesses or, no. or that kind of thing. It's going to have to come from concrete forensic evidence. Right. And yeah, and witnesses really, I mean, they no. they don't stand up in court. No. The ballistics don't stand up. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that really doesn't. It's crazy what stands up in court. And what no, if you look at the Delphi case... If you read through that PCA, mm -hmm. they they interviewed like what four or five different witnesses, and every single one of them is different. Every description is different. It, it's so yeah, witnesses aren't do not do not hold up at all. My heart goes out to the family. It really does. It was a horrible crime. Scott Peterson is the scum of the earth. But I'm an evidence person. And I want to see the I want to see the evidence. Yeah, me too. I don't know how her family would feel, and I will never ever venture to say I do because that I that is not for me to know. Thank goodness I don't have. To, hopefully, I'll never have to know how they feel. But show it, study the forensics, follow the evidence. You know, I, I I'd much rather if I my much rather someone be convicted on real physical evidence than yeah. circumstantial. Definitely. But like, but you can get convicted on circumstantial evidence. It happens all the um, time. I the best way I heard to explain it, and I cannot stand this woman, Nancy Grace, but she explained it very well. She said it rained outside. You didn't see the raindrops. You go out after the rain, but it smells like rain, and there's puddles on the street, and things are wet. So you know it rained, and you definitely do know, you know what I mean? And that was a really good explanation of it, in my opinion, because that Unless made... the sprinklers went off in the front yard. And then there's always the people like Pete. Who, who, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But to me, that made sense. Like, the, all the evidence, all the stuff is there. It's not direct. You're not out there catching the raindrops in your hand or on your tongue or on your body, right? But you know it rained. You go out there and you know in your heart of hearts and you would bet your paycheck on it raining. But like I said, test the evidence. Yeah. The, well, it can't hurt. No, it absolutely cannot. And the only thing it could <clears throat> do is possibly help to convict the right person. Or put any doubt in, that anybody has, this man is the man that did it. But if he is innocent and he walks, it is going to be a complete cluster poop emoji show and it will be interesting to watch and it yes. will give us more content so it will it. yes so but for the sake of her family i hope he's the one i hope it's right i hope that you know this basically just proves that scott peterson is the scum who committed the crime yes definitely yeah i i would hope that this just puts it all to rest that they are going to do their due diligence they're going to follow the evidence and the evidence is going to lead right back to him and we'll know that the right man is in jail. The hook brings you back, Blues Traveler. <laughs> <laughs> Big fan of song lyrics, too. Yes. Any last thoughts? Oh, we were talking about the wine. The wine, yes. So, like we said, uh, contrary to popular belief, we are not alcoholics. Uh, <laughs> Our family thinks we are. <laughs> because we're always going to wineries. But, uh, so this was, this was a uh, bottle that we had opened bunch of episodes ago. Uh, excellent. Pinot Grigio from Stone Farm Cellars uh, at Vineyard. They are right outside of Allentown in Pennsylvania in the Lehigh Valley. Uh, they have a beautiful barn. Uh, the, the property is gorgeous. They're beautiful. Yeah. Uh, they do a lot of different, and, and their wines are just excellent. So uh, It's very it, like rustic, if very, you like rustic yeah. barn kind of things. It's very cool. When you're driving up to it, it looks weird because it, you just sort of like there's like a big pool out there, yeah. and I don't know what that was all about. I think they, it almost looks like they, they took over some sort of resort or something. But the 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 barn, you, you walk in, and it's just you walk in, and there's like a little area to the left. It's I guess they have like gifts and stuff. And there's like a big tasting bar, but then there's like these narrow steps that take you up in this huge room above the barn where they have a band and they have the bar up there and. It was, it was nice. It was, it was very, it was a nice place to spend an afternoon. Yeah. For sure. 
But the uh, Pinot Grigio is excellent. It's a, it's a fruity, dry wine. Yes, it. it's it's not. Yeah, and this is actually they must have got the juice from somewhere else, right? Yeah. Because a Pinot Grigio. You said this last time. Yeah. Oh, okay. Never but go ahead, say it again. No, you're right. A Pinot Grigio grape will come from Italy. A Pinot Grease will come from G R I S, not like Greece, like the country, or Greece, like the Greece. You know, um, that will come from local. But a Pinot Grigio will be an Italian grape, and, Correct. and that juice would have to be um, imported. Yeah, I sound like wipes not wine snob. I really not. I, I believe me, I drank uh, white Zinfandel and cheap white Zinfandel until I was about 50, 45 ish. She's a big fan of Arbor Mist, just to. <laughs> no, he talks about like Arbor Mist. I do not. I'm not a big fan of Arbor Mist. But I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not one that will shy away from a spritzer. No, you won't. Join us for the next one. Please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. Please send us constructive criticism. Be nice because we're just <laughs> starting out. <laughs> yes, all comments are welcome. And next time I will go down even more rabbit holes because I know Pete's, we should have a Pete Stumps Mary episode. Like we could talk about the Watts case and you could just like throw questions at me. And that, yeah, that, yeah. that's a good one. That okay. is a good one. I like so, that. Yeah, so Pete stumped me as usual. I tried not to interrupt him, but I did anyway. <laughs> yes, I'm a little bossy, and I'll work on that. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see you next time.